no, 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 that background's just not gonna cut it. I need something that'll really set the mood. Ah, that's more like it. Sweet. Happy Halloween, people of the world. Sorry I'm not exactly dressed for the occasion, but hey, at least I've got the festive spirit in me. I decided that for Halloween, I'm gonna take a look at not one, but two Halloween specials, both from the same show, ironically. Well, it's actually a Halloween special and an episode set to air in time for Halloween this year. But we'll get there when we get there. Without further ado, this is the one and only C.R. Martin's The Amazing World of Gumball episode review, Halloween Edition. <laughs> Let's start with the Halloween special, which is titled... Halloween. It's Halloween night in Elmore, and everyone is celebrating in the best and most familiar way they know how. Dressing up in costumes, going from door to door, trick or treating, and partying until the break of dawn. The latter is more the Watterson kids' plan. Gumball, Darwin, and Anais make it to an abandoned house that is supposedly hosting an annual Halloween party. After Carrie enters the scene and explains what the festivities and guests are like, Gumball and a terrified Darwin continue on, much to the latter's chagrin, while leaving Anais hanging, literally, on a tree branch by her quote unquote babyish costume, much to her chagrin. Sorry you guys, the eldest child is almost always the one in charge. As much as it may suck for you, that's just the way the world works. Deal with it, you bunch of whiners. Into the abandoned house the trio go, where Carrie provides the Watterson brothers with a potion that allows them to see the party in question and its undead patrons. Things would have been smooth sailing if Gumball didn't accidentally give away that he and his brother are still amongst the living. Good job, you complete idiot. Forced to think on the spot, Gumball and eventually Darwin down the rest of the phantasmal potion until they become ghosts themselves. They take advantage of their newly acquired spectral appearances and wreak their usual mischief on the citizens of Elmore, from Larry Needlemeyer to Tina Rex to the Robinsons to God knows who else. You know be fun? Being a T-Rex. You take left, I'll take right. <laughs> Dude, it's way more complicated than it looks. Move the cap! Yeah, we'll bend the knees, man! I am! Put the hands out! Put the hands out! Uh, hey, Gumball, Darwin, you're controlling a T-Rex. You're not piloting a Megazord. A toddler wouldn't have a hard time figuring this out. In the meantime, Anais is struggling to get down from the branch, successfully frees herself only to fall into a well that magically appeared underneath her. It's Elmore, so I'm not gonna question it. And stumbles across the phantasmal potion from earlier. The hours are counting down, and Carrie catches up to the Watersons and warns them that they have until midnight to return to their mortal bodies. Otherwise, they will remain ghosts for the rest of their lives. What is it exactly with the until the clock strikes midnight golden rule? And before you bring it up, yes, I know that the 1995 Casper movie had a unique spin on the trope, but really that was more of a lazy variation rather than anything vaguely resembling uniqueness. Is it like some sort of be-all end-all curvy or something? So the race is on, and Gumball, Darwin, and Carrie hurry back to the abandoned house before midnight strikes. Caught in the midst of this chaos is Anais, who is also in spectral form, being dragged to what I can only assume is the show's equivalent of hell, holy shit, and Gumball comes to her aid and apologizes for not being the good big brother he should have been from the beginning. Fortunately, despite the odds stacked against them, Gumball, Darwin, and Anais end up A-OK. -okay. Or do they? What have you got to say for yourselves? We went trick or treating and then we took a shortcut. We went to a ghost party and it was supposed to be fun! I didn't know what the potion was gonna do when I drank it! What's going on here? What happened to you? Mom, don't freak out. Carrie can put us all back in our correct bodies. Right, Carrie? Um, what? Yikes. I brought this episode up in my top 10 episodes list, where it was put down as one of my honorable mentions. I didn't elaborate too much beyond that, so here goes. For the short version, this is a great episode. Now for the too long didn't read version because I like to be long winded so sue me, this episode is great because it captures the essence of Halloween. It takes place at night, characters are dressed up in costumes, the appearance of Carrie and the undead background characters for crying out loud. Every aesthetic decision in this episode worked towards encapsulating the atmosphere and feel that people recognize Halloween for. And for bonus points, it allows for a spin on the brothers antics that is unique only to this particular holiday. Gumball and Darwin going from door to door scaring people shitless, and Darwin taking advantage of his ghostly form by planting a big one on the lips of young Miss Carrie Cougar. <laughs> Puberty sure is treating you well, huh Darwin? It's a riot. It's all a downright riot. The character interaction is just spotless. Season 2 is when the secondary characters became more prominent, evident in each of them getting their own episode from that point on. Gumball, Darwin, Anise, and Carrie all working off of their given personalities, that's the stuff of a quality show. 
It is unfortunate that Anais doesn't get much time in the limelight compared to her brothers, especially since she tagged along with them. She just spends most of the episode hanging from a tree, and afterwards sorta of finds the potion and whoosh onto the next scene while that part of the episode just reaches a dead end. Halloween was a great episode to celebrate its holiday namesake, and talking about it makes me yearn for future holiday specials, seeing as we've only really gotten two so far, and it's been nearly four years since the last special, Christmas. But everything's fine and dandy now, because we have a bit of compensation for this festive drought. Enter the scam, and this one has quite the story behind it. See, this was originally a season 4 episode, and it aired in multiple countries during the last leg of season 4's run. Except for the United States of America, where the air date was pushed back to October 27th to coincide with Halloween. How do I know this? Because I already saw this episode in June. You can read all about it for yourself on multiple sources on the internet, like the show's wiki, or Wikipedia, or TV tropes. They'll explain the schedule discrepancies and which episodes were swapped around. For those of you living in the US, you got to see the stories, which was a season 5 episode, earlier than other countries. So yeah, this isn't a Halloween special, but it aired just in time for Halloween. Now for that good old The More You Know clip. Ah, thank you so very much, NBC. Now on to the episode itself. It's Halloween in Elmore once again, and the students of Elmore Junior High are all presenting something for show and tell. Gumball, rocking that sweet-ass Beetlejuice costume, takes his turn and tells the tale of an unholy monstrosity by the name of Gargaroth the Devourer. No one buys the story until paranormal activity unfolds in the classroom and scares the bejesus out of everyone, proving that the myth is not a myth, that Gargaroth is indeed real, living and breathing in the hearts and minds of those who hear his name, striking fear upon the weary at the most opportune moment. Actually, it's not true. It's just Gumball and Carrie pulling the wool over everyone's eyes, because there's no other kind of fun like psychologically scarring your classmates and teacher. But no, this is just the first phase of a far more elaborate plan, to con their peers and the faculty of their Halloween candy. Carrie swoops in, puts her ghostly powers to work making everyone believe that Gargaroth's wrath is upon them, and Gumball and Darwin burst into the scene to save the day. Simple as that. I'm tired, Darwin. I'm tired of having to wear a mask on Halloween because people wouldn't give me candy if they knew it was me. Because of my reputation, Darwin. My reputation. Alright, fine, it's because I'm greedy. Why do you have to be so smug about it, Gumball? The scam goes smoothly without any hitches whatsoever, but what the trio doesn't realize is that the legend of Gargaroth is indeed true. The fabled monster services in Elmore Junior High, and now Gumball, Darwin, and Carrie have to save the day for realsies. And they do, but at the expense of their ill-gotten gains, to Gumball's annoyance. Okay, well, bye. Bye. Oh, oh, um, unless you're hungry. Not really. What was left of that candy looked pretty well digested. Oh, right. Never mind. Oh, or we could just get an ice cream. Uh, I, 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 Come on already! Wow, talk about a cock block. Don't worry, Carrie. That's what fan art and fan fiction are for. Boy, the quality of these episodes have been amazing lately, haven't they? Forget the Ghostbusters reboot. If you want something that lives up to the legacy of the awesome original film, look no further than this episode. While the atmosphere here is still great, it doesn't capture the Halloween essence as perfectly as the actual Halloween special does. The most that it gives us in this respect is the Halloween decorations in the school, the costumes that the characters wear, and the gigantic pile of candy that the brothers and Carrie gather. Apart from those, the rest of the standard Halloween fare isn't there. You don't see anyone trick-or-treating, the episode takes place during the day and not the night, and not counting Carrie because she was born a ghost, there aren't any haunted houses or undead creatures at all. We still do get Gargaroth though, and no, I wouldn't exactly classify him as an undead creature. But everything else makes up for it. The writers outdid themselves with this blatant, affectionate parody of the original Ghostbusters from the 1980s. The attention to detail is uncanny. The background music, which is similar to the synthesizer-heavy theme song by Ray Parker Jr., the suits worn by Gumball and Darwin, the use of vacuum cleaners to allude to the proton packs, it's all marvelous. And just like the Halloween special, the chemistry amongst the characters are brilliant. Fictional characters, whether primary or secondary, mingling and getting along is sort of like an all-you-can-eat buffet. You mix and match them for a wide variety of combinations, and the results that you produce are different every time, but interesting nonetheless. The mischievousness of Gumball and Carrie and the initial reluctance of Darwin mesh beautifully. Their personalities complement and work off of each other in the same way that peanut butter and jelly do. It's very tasty. 
I'm talking about the characters' personalities, by the way, not peanut butter and jelly, although that's tasty in its own right, too. Now, for a couple of observations I want to quickly bring up. Number one, the music playing during Darwin's Fantasy is a carbon copy of the hit single Lovin' You by Minnie Ripperton, the one that goes la 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 yeah, that one. Number two, when you compare the two of them, Gumball in this episode is basically Peter Venkman, if he were 12 years old and an anthropomorphic cat. Number three... Darwin, what was going on in your head when Carrie asked you if she could use your body? What the f*** was that reaction? So, Darwin, do you mind if I borrow your body to, you know... <laughs> no problem. I'm officially scared of you now, you gutter-minded little boy. Lastly, seeing as this episode cements the relationship between Darwin and Carrie, or rather their feelings towards each other, what does that make Rachel? Anyone remember her? Rachel Wilson? Tobias's older sister? It appears no one does. She's probably cast into the void just like Molly used to be. Must be because she didn't leave a lasting impression unlike Carrie. What else is there to say? All in all, another fantastic episode. Now for the inevitable million dollar question. Which of these two episodes is better? That is a tough one. I guess it boils down to whatever floats your boat. A matter of preference. <laughs> oh shut up. It's a matter of apples and oranges. These are two distinctly different episodes, barring some nuances. If you're in a celebratory mood, the Halloween special is just for you. It captures the spirit of Halloween to a T, and it lends itself to hilarious hijinks that you can associate with the holiday. If you want something that'll bring you to the edge of your seat, then the scam will give you your fix. There's just so much more weight to it with Gargaroth emerging from the depths and bringing about the end of the world, whereas in the Halloween special, it's just a race against time and that's it. If I have to choose which one I like better, then the scam would have to be my choice. The high stakes situation is just too gripping for me to put down. Halloween is a great episode and all, and it's still funny by all means, but the grander scale of the scam has won me over better while never forgetting that it's a comedy. And there you have it. While I do prefer one episode over the other, it doesn't make the other episode any worse. I'll go on record and say that they're both of equal quality. Because really, the way I see it, when it comes down to it, there's only a good episode or a bad episode. Yes, critics like myself give our two cents on something, pointing out what works and what could be improved, and pitting the pros and cons against one another in order to arrive at a final score. But in the end, I am just like every one of you, a guy who loves cartoons with all of his heart. Don't let my word dissuade your enjoyment of anything. You happen to enjoy something like the Powerpuff Girls 2016? Sure, more power to you, man. My poor opinion of it doesn't have to be yours, nor does it have to affect whether or not you watch it. Just a little something I wanted to leave you guys before taking off. With that said, Halloween and the Scam, spectacular episodes each getting a 4.5 out of 5. And thus ends C.R. Martin's Halloween special. Thank you guys for watching, and be sure to stick around because there's plenty more coming your way. The most notable will be an upcoming collaboration, a Christmas edition review, and my very first video game review. And perhaps a few more Gumball episode reviews. I know people have been dying for me to take a look at the disaster and the rerun. And trust me when I say that I will definitely take a look at those. Yeah, all that should be fun. I'm the one and only CR Martin. And if you'll excuse me, I have some leftover candy that needs attention. Happy Halloween! Ghostbusters.